In my ongoing journey to create original content, I thought I would venture to make a photography video no one has made before. But then that didn't work out, so here's another basics of photography video. Let's start from the beginning. This is a camera, but there's a lot of different types of cameras that work in a lot of different ways. However, they all have one thing in common. They all work by getting light to the photo capturing thingy, which will either be a sensor in the case of a digital camera or film in the case of a film camera. Now, there are three basic principles that control how much light you're exposing onto your PCT. That would be your aperture, shutter speed, and film speed, better known as ISO at this point. Some people call this the exposure triangle because some people are visual learners that need shapes to feel literally anything. All right, let's get into it. Hello, and again, welcome to the Aperture Science Computer Aided Admission Center. This is a dope-ass word that describes how wide the opening in your lens is when the PCT is exposed. It's measured in f-stops, and one thing that confused the hell out of me when I was starting is the lower the f-stop, the more open your lens is. That's just because the f-stop number is determined by the focal length of your lens divided by the diameter of the opening. So, if you have a 50mm lens with a 6.25mm opening, you're shooting at f8. If you have a 25mm opening, you're shooting at f2. You get the idea. Obviously, the more open your lens is, so the lower your f-stop, the more light you're letting in, making the picture brighter. Let's move on to shutter speed. This one's a pretty easy one to grasp. This describes how long your shutter will be open as the PCT is exposing. This is typically measured in fractions of a second. I found that most mechanical cameras have a range between 1 4,000th of a second to 1 full second. If you have the option to use a digital camera's electronic shutter, they can reach insane speeds like 1 10,000th of a second. Sometimes you'll see a B marking on the camera, and that just means bulb, which is basically the shutter will stay open for as long as you hold the button down. The longer you leave the shutter open, the more light you let in, making the picture brighter. Finally, for film speed. Ektar Film now comes in a new cartonless package in 25, 100, and 1,000 speeds. This was an old term to describe how sensitive the film you were shooting with was. It used to be measured in ASA when the American Standards Association ruled supreme, but it was changed to ISO when the International Standards Organization took over in 1974. Now, these numbers are pretty arbitrary, but all you need to know is when the number doubles, the sensitivity doubles. Something like 50 ISO is considered incredibly low, while something like 3200 ISO is considered incredibly high. This system actually works the same between film and digital. However, in film you're kind of stuck with whatever ISO the role you chose to shoot with was rated at, while digital sensors can change their sensitivity on the fly. The higher the ISO, the more sensitive your PCT is to light, making the picture brighter. So why are there three different ways to control exposure? Well, if you'd shut up, I'd get to it. Each of these three controls have a trade-off. Aperture affects depth of field, shutter speed affects motion blur, and film speed affects noise or grain. So, depth of field, what is it? This is how you describe how far away an object has to be from your center of focus before it becomes blurry. The lower your aperture, the more shallow your depth of field will be. This is what leads to that whole clear subject with the blurry background type of look. With a higher aperture, you'll find that way more is in focus, which is why you'll typically see landscapes taken with higher f numbers. So if you're pressed for light and want to open the aperture up, keep in mind that you may lose some definition in anything that isn't within your center of focus. That's when you may want to reach for another control like shutter speed. Okay, remember this. Any movement that occurs while the shutter is open will register as blur in the final picture. So, the longer the shutter speed, the more motion blur your image will contain. Now, this isn't always a bad thing. Sometimes you can use motion blur to create some artsy shots, or some interesting ones. However, if you're looking for a sharp image on a fast-moving subject, a faster shutter speed is the way to go. During typical daylight, you'll find that a fast shutter speed and a low aperture can get you a decently exposed shot 90% of the time. The real challenge is when it comes to difficult lighting situations where you still have some moving subjects. This is where something like film speed comes into play. Film speed is usually my last resort for squeezing in a little extra light into an image. This is because more sensitivity usually means more grain. Sometimes grain can be cool if you're going for that whole lo-fi sort of vibe, but it's usually just distracting from the overall image. If you have your shutter speed and aperture right where you want it but are still finding you're a bit underexposed, bumping up your ISO may just do the trick. But if you're on film, you're just f***ed. 
At that point, you just gotta finish the roll and put in a higher rated film. More recent digital sensors and modern film emulsions have gotten good at reducing noise even at fast speeds, but anything above 800 ISO is still a bit of a gamble. So to finalize, start with a low ISO and work your way up as your lighting situation demands it, unless you just want to be a rebel and break photography in cool ass ways. Well, congratulations, you've basically just learned the equivalent of a $4,000 Photography 101 course at SCAD, minus the practical experience and accredited professor. Instead you have me, an idiot, do doing his best. I know there's a million how to take picture good videos out there, so thank you for watching mine. If you wouldn't mind liking the video, it may help more people trying to get into this art form find it. Make sure to leave a comment as well if there's anything else you'd like me to do a deep dive into. I hope you have a great day, and until next time. Thank you.